Hi, it's Dr. Emily Porter. I'm a board certified emergency physician in Austin, Texas, and we're in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. And I want to discuss a little bit today about social distancing and also everyone wearing masks and why wearing a mask may, might actually make you more likely to get infected with coronavirus. So first, uh, I think it's important to understand the difference between airborne and droplet spread illnesses. And so the mnemonic that we have for airborne illnesses are MTV is on air. And so those mean, what that means is that when somebody sneezes or coughs, they go up in the air. The droplets last and hover in the air. So they're incredibly contagious because if you're on a plane, it means like the majority of the plane is going to get infected. Or if you're in a room with somebody an hour later, you might get infected. So these are very highly contagious. Um, and what they are is they are measles, mumps, and rubella, which is what's in the MMR vaccine, uh, tuberculosis, and then varicella, which is chickenpox. Chickenpox parties work so well back when they used to do them because all you had to do is just have the kids in the same room and like everybody got sick. So that's an easy way to remember airborne. And tuberculosis, like when we're in the ER and we have somebody that maybe has tuberculosis, we put them in a special room where the air is sucked out of the room and filtered. It's called a negative pressure room. Um, we wear a special kind of mask that actually has a filter on it so that we're not uh, filtering in any of the particles into our bodies. Um, so these are super contagious. Fortunately for us, at least what we think, and again, everything is changing sometimes daily here, is that um, coronavirus is actually falls under droplet precautions. So what that means, it, the, the ones that those are, um, are going to be um, pneumonia, influenza, meningitis, meningitis and pertussis which is whooping cough so pimp and then also coronavirus we think coronavirus so these are they're still very contagious but the way they're spread is differently it's still somebody sneezing coughing touching somebody's saliva, um, and it's sort of in the air, but the dr it's by a droplet. So droplets, they really spread like three to six feet, maybe when you cough. Um, and so if, but if you, it, once they land, they land on the ground, unless you're going around licking the ground, you're much safer because they don't hover in the air. But they do, the droplets do land on surfaces, and depending on how porous the surface is, um, they could get absorbed and they could stay for hours. So that's part of the reason why social distancing is really, really important. So again, these are, these are all very contagious things, but the way they're spread is differently. And the three to six feet will protect us from a droplet, but not from an airborne. Um, so this is good news because this would be a real disaster, um, but we can contain this. But what we have to do is social distancing. And so I'm going to show you what that means when somebody sneezes or coughs. And then I'm going to demonstrate about wearing a mask and how wearing a mask might actually make me more likely to get sick. These things are sticky. Okay. So I have a little man here. And I got a little woman right here. She wears a skirt. And they got legs, I guess. Okay. And... He's going to sneeze, and this space is three to six feet. So if he sneezes airborne, it's going to be like a cloud up here, and it's actually going to go all over the place, the whole room. If he sneezes or coughs with droplet, those particles are heavier. And so when he sneezes or coughs, it's going to fall or he spits. Think about when you're talking to somebody and I'm, I confess, I'm actually a little bit of a spitter when I talk, but I don't usually spit six feet. 
um, unless I'm intentionally, I got a farm girl thing going. So unless I intentionally try to spit six feet, if I just spit when I'm talking, generally it's not gonna go more than three to six feet. So if I spit or cough, it's generally gonna land in, on the floor here or on the surface, if this is a table, it's gonna land here. But it's not gonna hit this person and get in their face. That's, that's how you get it. You it comes in through a mucous membrane. So a mucous membrane is something wet. So your skin is, is, has something on it called the stratum corneum. It's a barrier. It's meant to keep things in and not let things in. It keeps the fluids in and it doesn't let a lot in. So it's a very good um, infection control barrier. Anything that we do that compromises the barrier, like an open wound, is obviously gonna make you more likely to get infected. But if you're just walking around with normal skin, normal hands, it's protecting you. But if somebody sneezes on my hand or I cough on my hand and then I touch my eye or I touch my nostril or I, I lick my mouth or touch my mouth, well now it's getting into my mucous membranes and then it goes into your bloodstream and then it makes you sick. So I don't know many people that can go a whole day without touching their face. Um, and masks seem like a really good idea. And for the healthcare personnel, they actually are an excellent idea. We need them. We, we're really in short supply right now. So we wish we had more of them, um, but the supplies are limited. If I put a mask on, I'm gonna fan it out. This is a surgical mask from either using an OR for droplet precautions. These are not applicable to airborne. Um, and you kind of bend it, and if you've got glasses, it sometimes it fogs up your glasses. So I put it on and cover my face. And like, see, I'm already annoyed by it. I'm already touching my face. I'd have to have a cap on because now it's like, I want to adjust it. It's touching my hair. The little tie slides down. So I've got it on and I'm going to go in and see a patient and that patient is maybe going to sneeze on me. Now if I'm a trained doctor, I'm going to know how to take this mask off. I'm going to have a bouffant cap on. I'm going to have a, like a plastic gown or a paper disposable gown and my gloves. Everything is going to come off and it's going to come off from the inside out. We literally rip the gowns off. Like you grab the gown, you rip it off from the inside out, and then you turn. See, it's, it's hard. They slide around on your face, which is why if you don't have experience with a mask, you shouldn't wear one. Um, and it, you rip it off inside out, and you tear everything, and you roll it up in a ball. And the only thing that your hands have ever touched, because your gloves are on, so then you, you tear it off, your gloves go inside, and then you, you're touching the inside of the gown, and you throw it in the trash. So that's how we remove this stuff, and then you would remove your, um, your cap and things. So, but if somebody were to sneeze on me, I'm gonna have my assistant sneeze on me, and I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. He's gonna show you what droplet looks like. So the droplet, if it gets on me, and it gets on my mask, and I'm a normal, healthy person, I'm not a doctor right now, I'm just a normal person wearing a mask around at the grocery store or at the store you know the store or the restaurant okay now i don't have gloves on i don't have a special head bouffant on i don't have a gown on well this mask is boy it's really bothering me it's so hot it's touched my face and he sneezed all over my mask it's it's it seems like it's protecting me but it's not because now i've got it all over my hands and also now it's all over this table because it landed on the table and so now I'm sitting here having dinner and I've touched the table or it's on my mask. I touch this and I decide to take my mask off and my face itches. And now I've got it all over my face. And then in 15 minutes, I touch my face and my eye itches and now I've got it. So it's more contagious for you to wear a mask if you don't have experience wearing a mask. And it's very hard to wear a mask for five minutes, let alone five hours, like surgeons do. I couldn't do it, that's why I'm not a surgeon. Um, but if somebody is sick and has a mask, and we have them wear a mask before they come into the clinic or before they come into the ER, um, we have them put a mask on. Well, now if they sneeze, this sneeze catches the mask. It doesn't, it doesn't catch 100%, because you know still stuff can get out the side, but it protects this from happening. So now, if they have a mask on, like it stops right here. It, gets, it all gets caught inside the mask. So now, that three to six feet doesn't matter as much because it didn't go, it didn't go all over the floor and all over the table, um, and it didn't get in my face. So that's why, I mean, obviously, if I'm taking care of a six, 
sick patient, we're both going to wear masks for double protection. But if you're just an average American not caring for sick people, having a mask on is actually going to be more harmful harmful for you. Um, but staying in, not getting in where people could have, you know, common areas where people could have sneezed or touched, that's why they're shutting down the bars. That's why they're shutting down the restaurants because when people are sneezing, they're touching these surfaces. Um, so I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that you'll make the right decision and practice social distancing, um, which is just keeping a three to six foot space between you and another person and then not gathering in crowds of more than 10 people um, because this uh, virus is highly infectious. I guess I can take this off now. Thank you very much for your time.